What's up investors, Sneer is here. REITs are a special entity that invests in real estate and pays almost all of its income back to investors as dividends. As such, the measures we usually use for companies that sell products and don't pay most of its income back to investors are not relevant for REITs. Stocks usually use the bottom line measured called net income or earnings. But for REITs, this measure doesn't work so well, so REITs have its own measures called FFO, Funds from Operations. In this video, we'll cover everything you need to know about FFO, what it means, why we need to use a different measurement for REITs, and how it helps you to understand REITs better and invest better in REITs in result. Guys, if you are new to the subject of REITs or want a refresher on the basics, there is a video I made for basics in investing in REITs, which you can find in the description below or the card above me right now. I also make multiple videos about the subject of REITs and there is a full playlist of me talking about many aspects of REITs. You can find it in the description below. So let's start by looking at how FFO, funds from operation, is calculated and then we'll go to the reasoning why it's better to use that than net income and why we need it at all. FFO is calculated by taking the net income and adding back the depreciation and amortization, neglecting any changes based on property sales. That means that adding back losses on property of sales and subtracting any gains from sales of property and at last subtracting any interest of income. So basically FFO is derived directly from the net income figure with some adjustments. Every adjustment has a reason and understanding these reasons will make you a better investor in REIT. So let's go in deeper into every reason. First we will start with depreciation and amortization. Depreciation and amortization are accounting tools that allow companies to spread the expenses of assets over the asset lifetime instead all at once. For example, if a factory buys a machine that expected to work for 10 years, it can expense its cost over the next 10 years through depreciation and not all at once. It makes sense as the machine loses value over time and it also allows the business to present its accounting in a smoother way. So instead of having a big dump every 10 years, every time it needs to buy a new machine, the business will depreciate the value of the machine every year smoothly. So you will see the progression of the business through the years in the net income more smoothly instead of every 10 years seeing a big unexpected dump because of buying the new machine. Now the gap rules for accounting forces every company to do this for every asset, including REITs. But in REITs, the main asset is the real estate, the buildings. And real estate does not work the same as machines. Whereas machine loses value over time and after 10 years will be unusable, real estate is only appreciating over time, usually. So in 10 years, the building will not lose its value, but it will appreciate in value. So it makes no sense to depreciate the asset. And that's why depreciation and amortization is added back to the net income figure, because it doesn't make sense to remove them for real estate assets. Guys, if you find this kind of content valuable to you and you want to support me, a hit to the like button will help me a lot. And I want to remind you I have additional content for the individual investor in the links in the description below. So definitely check that out if you're interested in that. And with that said, let's go back to the video. The next adjustment for FFO that we need to talk about is property sales. We add back any losses from property sale and subtract any gains for property sale. So why do we do that? FFO or funds from operation main goal is to be a representative cash flow for the company. So you will know what is the expected funds from operation from regular operation that you expect to get every year constantly. Any sale of property is not part of the regular operations of a REIT. The regular operations of a REIT consists of maintaining assets and get the rents from the occupants of these assets. So inserting any sale of property to the funds from operation figure will make the figure unreliable through the time because you will not be able to tell what is the funds from operation, the regular operation over time. One year when the REIT will sell a lot of properties, you will see a huge bump, which will not be explained the next year when it will not be like that. And what really important to us as investors investor in REITs is what the REIT can pay to us. And the REIT must pay to us 90% of its net income, net taxable income. And usually sales of properties is not calculated into that. So it is useful when a REIT sells a property and reinvest the money, but it's beyond the scope of calculating the funds for operation, which is a proxy to the cash flows of the REIT. 
And last thing is the interest income, which has the same reasoning for the property sale. It's not part of the regular operations of the REIT and therefore will make the FFO figure less reliable. Because again, we want the FFO to represent the regular cash flows of the REIT. And we want to use this figure to understand the progression of the REIT through the years. So we want to be able to look at the FFO figure on a year per year basis and tell the progression of the REIT through the years. So if we look at the year before and we see that the FFO was much lower than today, we will be able to tell, okay, this REIT progressed their cash flows probably through good management or through expanding its assets. So now that we understand why FFO works so well for REITs, it's time to discuss the negative side. Most of the funds from operations issues comes from its solutions, most notably the adjustment to depreciation and amortization. As I mentioned, it doesn't make sense to depreciate real estate asset, but real estate is not the only asset that REITs hold. For example, many REITs that hold commercial real estate also holds all the content within the commercial real estate. So for example, a REIT that holds malls usually have restaurants within the malls, and some of the REITs hold all the kitchen equipment within the mall. So all this equipment within the kitchens that worth a lot of money do depreciate over time, and you need to calculate that. And there are many REITs that focus on commercial or hotels or many other different kind of REITs that do have assets within the real estate that should depreciate. And to account for that, there is a third figure called AFFO, Adjusted Funds from Operations. The idea is to take the regular FFO we already calculated and intelligently adjust it depends on the assets of the specific REIT. But as you can imagine, it's very difficult to standardize this kind of measure, so it's not standardized and it's not forced by every REIT to publish it. But every REIT that does publish an AFFO figure usually have this figure much more reliable over time. But again, it depends on the management and the specific REIT and your trust in them. But in any case, using the AFFO figure is better than using the FFO when it's available. So that's it guys, that's what FFO is and why you want to use it in the context of REITs. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more content from me for the individual investor, consider subscribing to the channel and I hope to see you in the next time. Bye bye.